Welcome to another episode of Under the Surface. I'm Levi Polzin, at Levi Warner on Instagram. Today I'm going to show you how to draw better sleeves. All right, let's get into it. All right, we're going to get right into it. Uh, today we're going to show you how to draw a better sleeve. I already uploaded a drawing that I have um, of the human body kind of side profile. Uh, Basically, I just use it from real life reference, so kind of Google search some uh, body reference. Um, but yeah, I, I recommend you utilizing whether your own body or somebody else you know, take a photo of them and then use an actual form. Um, I think using the actual form of body is better than um, kind of just drawing a regular human shape arm. Um, but yeah, today we're going to be focusing on sleeve design and how we can draw better sleeves. All right, um, let's get into it. So I'm going to start a new layer. We're going to go on top of the layer that we already have and start something with a different color. We'll start it with blue. Um, so first off, I'd like to kind of define some areas. We're going to like kind of always start with some shapes, see what's working, see what's not. Um, Now, for the sake of this, because I mainly do Japanese tattoos, I'm going to include a chest panel in this. Um, so we're going to kind of draw out that. I'm not going to do a full chest panel, um, but kind of more of a half chest panel of sorts. And then we're just going to go and define our line of where we want kind of the bottom to end, which I usually go a couple inches like above the wrist. Um, you know, if you kind of look where this would kind of bend it the most, that's usually where I stop a sleeve. Um, so as always, I'm, in this I'm not going to actually draw a sleeve. More what I'm going to do is kind of show you shapes and and flow kind of lines in a couple different ways and how those can um, improve your sleeve designs overall. Um, for the most part, I'm going to focus on the outer part of this and then we'll kind of get into the chest. Uh, I really like to look at the arm in a couple different sections. Um, there's kind of three of sorts, you know, uh, you kind of half sleeve, lower uh, arm, and then the chest. Um, when it comes to the upper part of the arm, I usually like to think that there's a focal point up towards the front of the shoulder. And then I like to take that focal point and look back. And so then I like to think of another focal point back towards the back of the delt. And then another zigzag kind of line. And then there's a another focal point in the front of the bicep, which kind of can go across and into the inner arm. Um, from here, I feel like you could either lower this point. So I'm going to do it in a new layer here with a different color. We'll use, um, we'll use green. You could take this third focal point and you could go lower and kind of put it down towards the ditch if you wanted to. Um, I, I tend to like it up a little bit higher because then it splits the arm into kind of a little bit more two sections of the lower and the upper arm. Um, but if you wanted to, pretty much down lower here is kind of your third point as well. Hide this so it doesn't get confusing. And then I like to kind of take that and move it down here. And even though it's an elongated kind of thing, you could you could kind of go to here and utilize another point of reference here if you wanted to, um, to get four up top. And then I go to kind of about here for my next point of ref, uh, kind of interest of sorts. And then back down like that, and then over kind of like that. So I really look at the arm as kind of like this zigzag. And, and the chest kind of plays into that too. It's not really a zigzag, but it kind of goes from here. And the interest point is just kind of right there. Usually kind of ch 
connecting to the front of the shoulder. Um, and these are my general rules of interest points when I'm laying out a sleeve. Um, I don't always abide by strictly by this, but it's kind of like when I'm thinking of an arm, a lot of times, like if I'm just thinking of a half sleeve, a lot of times I won't do this one here. Um, and I'll just kind of do these upper three as my main interests. Um, and I like kind of a dead zone here to leave for background um, because I feel like having your background, which ties in all along um, this section of the arm really allows for visually the arm to look complete. Whereas you just, if you just have subject matter through here, I feel like somehow it almost looks disconnected in a way. Um, if you're not utilizing background, I find it's almost helpful to use, to play a little bit into this area, this kind of dead zone here, but leave some of it open so, um, it still has some openness in there because you're utilizing that negative space as your background in a lot of ways. So that's kind of like one way in which I lay things out for interest points. You know, you could look at that as peony or a snake or a dragon. Um, you know, let's put another layer on top and we'll kind of just draw a little something um, really rough though. We'll go red over top of it just so it shows up really well we'll minimize or kind of take that layer down a little bit all right so you know if you think of it let's say let's say a snake um you could put i feel like if you're looking at the arm as a whole um, i would usually choose to either put kind of my head in either around this point or up further or here or almost here um, for the for this design I'm gonna kind of start around here um, so I'm gonna like pretend like my snake head would be essentially right here and then you could think that your neck would come down pull along some of these lines and then maybe you would hide some of the snake um, here with a different interest point like say like a peony or something like that and then some clouds um, because this is once again kind of an interest point and then where you would have the chest say you're going to use like another peony or something like that to utilize your rhythm of your interest points and then say here you want more of that body to show through so you do some interest there as well um, with the snake body to give that rhythm and then once again probably I'd put like another peony or something here um, as another interest point but yet different from the snake interest point um, so we have a rhythm of interest points, but yet they're, they're differing interest points. Um, and then from there, I would probably put, say, like the tail of the snake as our final interest section there. Um, but there's kind of an a example of how that's kind of following those interest point perspectives in, um, in something. So you can utilize that same thing, say, with um, your background as well. Let's use, let's use some gray and a pencil here. Um, and, you know, we're almost going to do the negative of where we're going to have our interest points here. So if we're just going to draw some, I'm going to just draw some background, but I'm almost going to think of it like, like there is stuff in these interest points, um, and I'm going to just kind of draw where I think would kind of things would go. Oops, sorry. Let's draw, make a new layer there. There we go. Okay. 
Um, for the sake of this, let's draw just some clouds. You know, I'd probably put something like that in here. Maybe some alternating wind. Maybe another spiral kind of coming up and around here. Some more clouds of sorts. More wind. Uh, probably pull another big swirl over here. And then probably some clouds along here. And then wind bars up along that shoulder of sorts. And you can see that works on its own, right? Like the, this still looks interesting, but yet we don't even have our interest points within there, but yet it would still be able to work around those interest points. Um, but yet that looks complete as a whole as it is as well. So um, thinking of the negative of where we have our interest points um, really allows us to see where we want um, our background to go. Um, and it really should be a weight, like almost an even weight, like whatever you have of your background um, should be evenly weighed with your subject matter. And that, and that's even if you're doing like, say, oversized imagery or something like that. So like, say you have something really big on this arm, you need to like counteract that with like a equal amount of, um, of background or of, you know, not, or even just open skin or something like that. Um, so yeah, that that's kind of another concept of how I would do th that, but just utilizing background um, to visualize that. Um, but yeah, I that's kind of usually how I'm I'm thinking and breaking down things. I know it seems pretty basic, simplistic, um, but that's it for the most part. I'm really just kind of breaking down the arm in this zigzag formation. Um, you could also look at it as like a, as S curves as well. So I think a lot of things start on this front edge of the wrist and they pull up and they kind of go along here to the ditch of the, the arm, then back along here. And then they don't quite go, I feel like to the armpit, but then go along there into the chest and I feel like that's a really good flow and rhythm um, for the arm and you can manifest that with your background or your subject matter or really kind of anything um, but that's kind of a uh, you know if we don't even think about sorry you know our subject matter points you know that's kind of a really good flow and we could see where things could go with that as well. Um, let's take away that. And just look at some other stuff here. I'll keep things kind of bulky so you can really, and then I always really try to focus things like moving forward, but also down um, on an arm because it's also looking at upswept. So, you know, if we look at the arm and the body, it's kind of moving in this direction. You can see when you cut all that across from the shape of the way the body would normally flow, it gives these nice lines along there. I'm gonna erase a bunch of this stuff off of here because we don't need to see it on the body. But we just I just want to see show you that like it parlays itself into the way that it, it moves on the body as well. that there we go um, and so then we can cut kind of a secondary line across things so I feel like here's a good point because you get that kind of um, armpit area another one's kind of like right around here right along that point 
there and then there and these are kind of breaking up your arm into different sections and if you look here it's almost creating those sections once again visually that I had before so if you look at that it's almost really pinpointing those areas in which I had laid out and that's really just showing the body as a map you know there's the the muscle structures and the flow of the body really has like an intuitive map to it um, so there's kind of a just another pictorial way for you to see how you could lay out things you know once again here we'll do kind of another different color and you can see um, I'll use kind of just a rose this time or something you got your kind of points of interest here another point of interest here another point of interest around here something around here something around here back here then here um, and that just follows it flows really within that grid you know you can you can see that the you, you kind of want things along flowing along this line here again and they're all kind of flowing within those general shapes all right it's kind of a, just a quick one but just a little easy breakdown for people to kind of hopefully lay out better sleeves, better half sleeves, um, and just things on the body in general. All right, I hope that was helpful. Um, let me know in the comments if you like these how-to videos. Um, and remember to subscribe to the channel and like the videos if you're into them. Um, leave us a comment about what you liked, what you didn't. And uh, we're trying to get to 1,000 subscribers so we can monetize this channel and bring you more in depth about this kind of stuff and I can bring you long videos of that um, but I can't do that until I start monetizing the channel so remember to subscribe to the channel um, hopefully um, I'm going to show soon for uh, the thousand subscriber um, once we get there I'll do like a little raffle giveaway for like maybe one of my prints or a set of prints or something all right thanks for showing up see you next time